Football Tuesday, Ohio State Week for the Terps. Jack Rothenberg and Mason Viner uh, here with you on Tuesday night. Jack, let's start it off. Go back to last weekend, the win against Penn State. What was the feeling on campus uh, after that one? Yeah, everyone's excited. Uh, similar to probably a bunch of Terps fans around the country, everyone's just in shock that they actually pulled it off. But uh, just a tidbit of information. Someone that I know at Penn State told me after their loss that the entire campus was just deflated, which just adds to the the joy of the win. Yeah, it does, and you know, year after year, we've seen it go the other way. So it was it was nice to get one. You know, even I would have loved to been there. You know, it's one of those games where you look at it and you're like, well, damn. You know, we would have been there if uh, if it wasn't COVID times. But you know, again, that that's what it is. You went to a football game this weekend. Uh, the Washington football team and the New York Giants. How, how was that? 3,500? Is that what the, the capacity yeah, was? It, yeah, it was a cool experience. Obviously, it was weird. Just like you said, there were only 3,000 fans there. Uh, they were, the only people that were allowed to go were season ticket holders, which was also weird because I saw a lot of Giants fans, which shows how uh, the fan base feels about the team this year. But overall, it was just a, it was a cool experience, but weird. Yeah, and, and one that we hope to... Maybe get at Maryland this year. I, I highly doubt it. Uh, maybe basketball. There there's some chatter that they'll let you know a really really select number of fans in for some of the games. Most likely only in the upper level if they are to do it. Uh, let's go to this weekend. The Terps again a 20 point underdog. Uh, this one might be the first time it's actually justified as them being a 20 point underdog against Ohio State. Uh, the Buckeyes number three in the country and they're led by Justin Fields. What do you expect to see out of him against the Terps defense? Yeah, he, he's been great this entire year, the three games he's played so far. Uh, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Russell Wilson. He can make plays happen. He uses his legs, gets out of the pocket. I expect a big game from him, him again. Even though this Maryland defense did show some great signs against Penn State, you, you can't expect him to do anything less than have a great game. Yeah, and he, he's about rolled over everybody that the Buckeyes have taken on so far this year, which is Nebraska, who's... Uh, I would say a middle-of-the-road team that hasn't found its footing yet. And then Rutgers, who looks much improved, but it, they're still Rutgers. Uh, what else do you think you can expect from the Buckeyes? Their defense eh, hasn't been great, but hasn't had to do a lot this year. Chris Olave, a guy that you got to look out for, a wide receiver. Um, what else do you really think you can expect from Ohio State? Right, yeah. I, I really like their running back tandem with Master Teague and uh, – and uh, Trey Sermon, it's a ch nice change of pace with Trey Sermon, but Master Teague has played great the three games that they've played so far, so they can keep that up along with the names you mentioned. you got Olave in the passing game, and they have some nice tight ends that they use in the mix. So that offense is just, uh, the Maryland defense is going to have their hands full on Saturday. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Yeah, and, and kind of a complete 180. I mean, they did a lot of what we talked about on across our Turp Talk network um, with switching to the 4-3. You know, they finally adapted after about a year and a handful of games uh, they finally put Sam O at defensive end and it really let Mo Kite and and the guys in the middle really bring it uh, Chance Campbell guy that's been rolling on for the Terps and then some of these guys on defense Loxley today in his press conference talked about Nick Cross who's kind of gotten back into form after they weren't too happy with the way he played against Northwestern do you think Maryland stands a chance on defense I, I think this Ohio State offense is one of those types of teams where you can't stop them, but you just got to hope to contain them. If they can get enough stops to give the ball back to this uh, offense led by uh, Leah, I think they can keep themselves in this game, but it's just they got to try and contain the offense as best as they can. Yeah, and kind of going back to Fields, do you really think he's that good, or do you think he's bound to eventually have a game where he makes some mistakes and, and it could be this week it could be against indiana it could be against you know it doesn't really you don't really know when it's going to come he's on a march for the heisman right now do you think he ever hits that, that lapse or is he just kind of you know going to beeline it all the way to uh the finalist show in new york right yeah i i personally do think he's that good but so far he hasn't really played that great of a defense you mentioned 
Uh, he might face one down the road with Indiana or one of these other Big Ten teams, but so far he's played Penn State and Nebraska, Rutgers. These teams don't have great defenses, so until we can see someone stop him, I'm going to keep believing that he's great. Yeah, and, and the Terps really don't have that great defense. They did play a lot better, much improved, and they did play great defense on Saturday against a Penn State team that, at least in my eyes, somewhat looked like they had quit uh, on the game pretty quickly after they didn't get that first touchdown when they were stopped on the seven-yard line. And we know that's not going to be the case with Ohio State. You know, Going back a few years ago, I believe you were at that game where Maryland lost 52-51. to Um I was certainly there. I was standing right in the end zone when when Jay Sean Jones missed that ball by what was probably a whole hand, a uh, whole hand over. You know, he just stretched a little bit more. He would have caught it. They didn't quit. You know, they were down early in that game. They were getting beat up and down the field by Anthony McFarlane. They're not going to go away. You know, this isn't uh, it's just it's a better oiled machine than any other team in this conference. And it's one of the best ones in the Big Ten. Do you give the Terps a chance? Yeah, like I said, if this defense can play somewhat up to the standards that they did last week, I can, I'll can. i give them a chance. But until I, I actually see it with my own eyes, I don't know. I, I think this offense, this Ohio State offense is going to be way too much. Yeah, and that kind of leads it to the weakness for the Buckeyes, which is really their defensive backfield. If they have one, that's what it is. Uh, up front, you know, it's just a, an amazing, you know, series of reload, reload. Sam Hubbard, Chase Young. You know, the Bosa brothers. And, and that kind of continues on to not necessarily one star player, but they are strong up front in the linebacking core. They've been a little, if again, if there is a weakness with all these five star guys, it's the defensive backfield. That gives, uh, that really plays right into the hands of the turf, forcing a shootout. Yeah, it does. And I would actually argue that their defensive line hasn't played that well because in the two out of three games they've played, they've let up 200 plus rushing yards. So I think we could see a big day for Jake Funk. But like you said, this defensive back, the, the the defensive backs for Ohio State haven't played great, and Dante Demas and Jayshon Jones could feast on that. Yeah, now Rock Jarrett kind of joins that after his um, big day on Saturday. Jack, kind of wrapping it up here, predictions. What do you see happening, and and really, do you think the Terps cover the spread? <laughs> I do think that they'll cover the spread, but I don't think that they'll win just because, like I said many times. This Ohio State offense is that good, and I think this Maryland defense will not be able to get enough stops, and they will not be able to contain the offense. I'm going to go Ohio State 45, Maryland 28. Right, and I'll take it uh, pretty similarly to you. I, I think the Buckeyes put up 52 against the Terps, and, and I think Maryland has a good day on offense. They get, uh, I'll kind of take it 52 to 38 is what I'll say. Maryland keeps it close uh, enough, and this is one of those games where your focus kind of continuing the conversation past that, your focus has to be on not getting blown out. You know, you, you want to compete in these games. You want to, you know, give your fans something to say, hey, we are getting better. And they, they did that last week, and they over, you know, over exceed everyone's expectations. They really uh, beat up Penn State. This is one of those games where you're playing the premier team of this conference, and you just hope to, you know, take the next step. You lost last year, what was it, 73 to 14, I think. Uh, be better than that. I think that's your key. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. And uh, the keys, just like I said, this defense got to get, if they're going to win, got to get get enough stops to give the ball back to Leo. Yeah, no, I think that's, if you had to give three keys, I would probably say that three times over. But I'll, I'll stick with what I said last week, which is make an impact play. You know, that's how you competed in this game uh, two years ago. And, and every time they've been able to stick around, I remember – uh, the second year they were in the Big Ten, Perry Hills ran the ball all up and down the field. They stayed in it uh, till the fourth quarter, but it started again with a big run at the beginning of the game. You know, get the energy up, get some points on the board, and if you can do it, it's going to have to be on an early lead. Those are kind of my keys. Get out there, hit somebody, you know, and have fun. This team's been having a lot of fun. You can see it on the field. You know, they're dancing when they score touchdowns. They're not. They have a lot of energy and a big personality. You just got to keep propping that up enough to keep your guys engaged and, and stay in the game. Yeah, I definitely agree. All right, and I think that's going to do it for Tuesday. Jack, uh, anything else? No, uh, Jake Funk, got to get the ball early, keep the run game going, uh, and then use play action off that to take the deep, deep shots against so this Ohio State defense. All right, and that's going to do it for this Football Tuesday. Jack Rothenberg, 
and Mason Viner. Guys, thanks for listening and stay tuned uh, after the game. We'll have the full Terp Talk Big Dog post game show and get all the Mike Loxley press conferences and, and whatever players are available after the game. All that will be on this YouTube page. Thanks for watching.